In humans, the specialized organs involved in reproduction are known as the gonads, and the male gonads are known as testes. Inside testes are these specialized tubules known as seminiferal tubules, and inside the seminiferal tubules is where the sperm cells are actually formed. And the process by which the sperm cells are formed inside the seminiferal tubules of the testes is known as spermatogenesis, and, and this will be the focus of this lecture. So let's begin by taking a cross section of the male gonads, our testes, we get the following diagram. Now these brown convolute tubules are the seminiferal tubules and notice that these seminiferal tubules eventually converge and form this highly convoluted structure known as the epididymis. Now before we discuss what the function of the epididymis is, let's discuss what the function of the seminiferal tubule is and what the structure of the tubule looks like. So if we take a single seminiferal tubule and we take a cross section and we zoom in on that cross section, we get the following diagram. So we have the internal cavity, the lumen of the seminiferal tubule, and this red portion is the wall of the seminiferal, seminiferal tubule. Now if we further zoom in on a portion of the wall, we get the following diagram. And this is the diagram that describes the process of spermatogenesis, how sperm cells are actually formed. So the red portion is the wall of the seminiferal tubule, this is the basement membrane, and this is the interstitium, it's the interstitial space. Now inside the interstitial space, we have blood capillaries, and we also have these cells known as Leydig cells. Now what Leydig cells do is they produce and release a special type of hormone known as testosterone. And what testosterone does is it stimulates the stem cell, the precursor stem cell known as spermatogonium to differentiate into a diploid cell known as the primary spermatocyte. So deep inside the wall of our seminiferal tubule are the stem cells of the male gonads known as spermatogonium. Now spermatogonium are diploid cells and that means in humans the chromosome number of spermatogonium is 46. So when Leydig cells produce our testosterone, it stimulates the spermatogonium to differentiate into the primary spermatocyte, also a diploid cell. So the sper uh, primary spermatocyte also contains 46 chromosomes. Now the primary spermatocyte can now undergo meiosis 1. And when it undergoes meiosis 1, it produces these two haploid cells, and that means they have 23 chromosomes, half of the chromosome number of the primary spermatocytes. And so these two cells are known as the secondary spermatocytes. Each of these secondary spermatocytes shown here can now undergo meiosis 2, and each one of these cells produces haploid cells known as spermatids. So overall, we have four spermatids produced from one primary spermatocyte. And so we'll see four of these sperm cells produced at the end because these spermatids, with the help of these nourishing cells known as Sertoli cells, shown in green, eventually differentiate into our sperm cell. So these spermatids, when they interact with the Sertoli cells, the Sertoli cells not only give the cells the proper nutrients, but the Sertoli cells also phagocytize, they remove the cytoplasm from our spermatid to produce the sperm cell. And we'll discuss what the structure is of the sperm cell in just a moment. Once the sperm cells are actually formed, they are released into the lumen, the cavity of the seminiferous tubule, and now the sperm cells can travel along the lumen of the seminiferous tubule, and eventually they end up in the epididymis. And once inside the epididymis, this is where they mature into sperm cells that look like this. And this is also where our sperm cells are stored before they release the outside environment. So in the epididymis, the sperm cells 
cells not only mature into cells that look like this, but the epididymis also serves to store those sperm cells before released, before being released to the outside environment. Now let's take a look at the structure of the mature sperm cell. So we have a head, we have a midsection, and we have a tail. Now the head consists of the nucleus that contains a haploid number of chromosomes. So in males, in male humans, that's 23 chromosomes. We also have the red section that is basically known as the acrosome. This is a Golgi apparatus that is capable of releasing special digestive enzymes that are needed to penetrate the egg cell to produce the zygote. So when the sperm cell combines with the egg cell, for the sperm cell to get into our egg cell, it must use the digestive enzymes found inside the acrosome, the red section, to basically digest and penetrate the membrane of that egg cell. Now, within the met, uh, midsection, we have these green organelles known as mitochondria, and these mitochondria are needed to produce ATP because the ATP is needed by the tail. The tail consists of a flagellum that is needed for locomotion. The flagellum basically allows the cell to actually move from point A to point B along these tubules, along these canals. So once again, we see that inside the male gonads, our testes, we have these tubules known as seminiferal tubules, and inside the wall of the seminiferal tubules, we have the sperm cells being produced in a process known as spermatogenesis. So we have Leydig cells that produce testosterone that stimulates the differentiation of spermatogonium into primary spermatocytes, and then with the help of these Sertoli cells, that provide the nutrients and also remove the cytoplasm, the primary spermatocytes eventually differentiate and produce these sperm cells that move into the epididymis and inside the epididymis they mature into mature sperm cells and they are stored inside the epididymis until they are released to the outside environment.